Hello and thank you so much for making time to be on Climate Check. I'm your host, Mary Mwekisa. Now today we're discussing all things climate finance. We know that mitigation, adaptation, and any aspect of ensuring that we take care of our environment requires finance. And that is what we will be focusing on on the program today. And of course, we have another issue that we'll be focusing on, which is an, an initiative that was launched recently by government right here in Lusaka. But for now, we'll take a short break. Now imagine if trees could provide Wi-Fi, just how many trees you would plant? Well, they provide oxygen. We definitely cannot do without it. Destruction of nature, such as forests, has led to irreversible climatic changes to our world. Join me as I talk to policy formulators, change makers, and climate change interest groups on Climate Check weekly on this channel. Now you are the solution to climate change. Now, in a bid to create a clean, green, and waste-free environment, Lusaka District Commissioner Rosa Zulu officially launched the Manja Pamodzi Aggregator Project. Now, the project is aimed at tackling litter problem and plastics pollution while empowering the community, particularly women. And so they're providing a solution to littering and plastic pollution. And our staffer, Dominic Davis Chifumbe, attended the event and brought us this report. For years, waste management has emerged as one of the greatest challenges that the country has been faced with. It is not a new problem, but the volume of waste being generated continues to increase at a faster rate than the ability of the city authorities to improve on the financial and technical resources needed to parallel this growth. With the coming of Manja Pamodzi through Zambia Bureaus and other cooperating partners, waste management is being managed. Government is responding to this by devising mechanisms to eradicate waste, especially plastic littering, as a way to protect the environment. Lusaka District Commissioner Rosa Zulu launched the Manjapamodzi Aggregator Project. This initiative resonates deeply with the Lusaka District office, Office's vision for the city of Lusaka and Zambia at large. As you heard from the Zambian Breweries Corporate Affairs Director, Manja Pamozi is not just about collecting waste. Innovation and the enterprise in its simple, simplest form is about finding solutions to the problems and issues around you. And Manja Pamozi is one such initiative that has been providing a solution to the plastic pollution and litter problem in our neighborhood while empowering our communities, particularly women, by creating over 1,000 income generating opportunities as waste collectors and the aggregators. The Lusaka Integrated Solid Management says the company's expectation from the general public is separation of waste in order to generate wealth. We are applying what is called the polluter pays principle. We all generate waste, so nobody is going to collect our waste. It is expected that whatever waste that we generate, we should pay for it. At household, at business, at institution. We should be responsible for the waste. We should ensure that our waste is properly contained and properly presented to those that have been appointed as the waste collection managers. And Solid Waste Management CEO Harun Witi says the unwillingness to pay for garbage collection has been a major challenge, saying the launch of the project was timely. An unwillingness to pay is due to two factors. I think one, yeah, the issue to do with it, uh, capacity. Other people don't have capacity to pay for the service. And other people is just unwillingness to pay for the service and stuff. So I think this is why the coming in of uh, the new association, the new association that is coming up, 
uh, which is going to be which is called now uh, Waste Management and Recycling Association of Zambia. This is the coming together of uh, the solid waste management companies that are working at a high level as franchise contractors, mm -hmm. as well as the CBEs, the community based enterprises, as well as the recycling companies. They'll be now working under one umbrella. Right. This is going to help because this will make all these players to work as a team and we'll be able to see these challenges and stuff. Because as well as the coming in of the issue to do with the EPR, and then it's going to make people pay through the commodity that they can pay. And this is what we are thinking the best can be, is to see how we can introduce the tariff bundling, where people can pay these fees through whatever commodity can be easier for them to pay. Right. The way we used to do before, before with TV levy, mm -hmm. where you are paying through Zesco, mm -hmm. if that's, that can be uh, uh, implemented to waste management, I think that would be the best way to go for making sure that each and everyone pays and each and everyone is being given a service. And in the fight against climate change, Clara Chibesakunda, head of Eco Unit Chilanga PLC, says collection of garbage gives us clear air and must be addressed collectively. So when you look at the fight against uh, climate change, if you look at plastics, plastics, um, as you may know, um, does not decompose. And once it is found in our water bodies in the environment, it pollutes our air. So in the fight to climate change, and this is why the theme says Plastic Free July, we are saying collecting all the plastic and disposing of it and not exposing it to the environment um, gives us a better uh, uh, air and cleaner air because we're talking about cleaner environment. So this um, collection, we were out in the market. We went in the market area just to send a message out to everyone to say, we can only fight climate change when we come together and uh, do this together. It's not about the council, it's not about the individuals, but it's all of us. And at the end of the day, the bigger message is don't look at this plastic as just waste. It's a resource. You can make money out of it. Uh, and this is why we're impacting and empowering the women today, because at the end of the day, we're able to give them a little something to be able to manage uh, their homes. And uh, at the end of the day, making our environment cleaner and uh, fighting uh, the climate change uh, uh, impact. Yes. A green and clean Zambia is achievable through concerted efforts. Dominic Davis Chifumbe reporting. Welcome back to Climate Check. Now, on to the main issue on the program today. Biodiversity Finance Initiative, Biofin, is a global partnership designed to address the biodiversity finance gap. It was launched by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, to help countries develop comprehensive national finance plans to protect and sustainably manage their biodiversity. It supports countries in identifying and mobilizing the resources needed to achieve their biodiversity targets. And uh, this is what we'll be focusing on, the works of Biofin, Biofin in Africa and in Zambia in particular. And we know that Zambia is dealing with a drought that has been induced by the El Nino effect. And so we'd like to know how some of these sectors affected by the drought are being addressed or looked into by Biofin. And I have with me in studio Mr. Bruno Mwemba, who is a senior technical advisor on environmental finance for African region, Biodiversity Finance Initiative Biofin. Thank you so much, Bruno, for making it to the program. Pleasure is mine. All right. Now, the last time I spoke with you was at your farm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> where you are growing, you are practicing climate smart agriculture. I saw uh, for the first time drip irrigation in real time mm -hmm. uh, and solar powered farm. And now, as a country, we're experiencing a drought, yeah. and government is talking about mechanization, off grid uh, solutions. Well, I mean, being an environmental finance expert, um, I, I always love to walk the talk. Mm -hmm. um, so, for me, when we were hit by probably another west kind of you know um drought mm -hmm. um way back in about 2015 yes uh 2016 for me that was a wake-up call that um uh, i needed to redesign my you know farming enterprise in a manner mm -hmm. that would be resilient just in case yes. this thing you know real cars and um yeah so as far back then i decided to go off grid with my farming 
our enterprise and um, yeah almost 10 years now we've, we've really been off grid and uh, we have no intention of really going to the grid mm. uh, because we, we've kind of survived mm. um, so we've, we've managed to basically create this level of resilience. So it was a worthy investment at the time because of course. The, the drought has affected the farmers mostly. Yes, I mean, uh, the, the cost also of irrigation, the, the inconvenience, um, mm. given that if power comes in the night yeah. with security issues, mm. sometimes it becomes very challenging for you to really, um, you know, irrigate. And so, yeah, the, the thesis for, you know, yeah. uh, us having gone for, you know, an off-grid, you know, solution and then bringing in other uh, climate resilience, you know, technologies um, as a small farming enterprise, now it's actually uh, paying off. It's paying off. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of doubts along the way, but yeah, here yeah, we are. Yeah, and government is now focusing on mechanization for smallholder farmers, mm -hmm. even those that can't afford irrigation. Government is trying to see how it can come in and give them basic irrigation uh, solutions, especially that most of them are into maize production. Uh, do you see this as sustainable? It is, um, provided obviously we get the right technologies because I can indicate that there's quite a lot of junk, unfortunately, on the market. Um, so we really need to make sure that we do our due diligence and make sure that we bring on board uh, service providers that have tried and tested technologies. Yeah. Um, and again, nothing utopian, make sure that we actually pick up um, technologies that are low hanging, applicable mm -hmm. to a common man. Okay. Now let's talk about why you're here this um, uh, this evening. We're talking about uh, biofin and the work that you're doing in Africa and in Zambia around climate finance. First of all, let's understand your role at biofin. Well, my, my role at the Biodiversity Finance Initiative is is basically to help um, a number of country, you know, countries that are parties to the convention on biological diversity uh, towards uh, financing the national biodiversity strategies and action you know plans um, so i must actually indicate that um, uh, climate you know change is just one component mm -hmm. of the rio conventions uh, yes. but then we have also another convention that's called the convention on biological diversity mm -hmm. and then we have one also called the unccd so we've got like th three of them okay. so for us our focus is much more on the convention on biological diversity mm -hmm. where um, it's envisaged that we have a deficit of about 711 billion, mm -hmm. uh, you know, dollars uh, to get to 2030 in terms of, um, you know, attaining mm -hmm. uh, the 23 targets that are there in the global biodiversity, you know, uh, framework. Mm -hmm. By the way, the global biodiversity framework is what we call the equivalent of the, you know, Paris Agreement when you mm -hmm. talk about climate change. Yes. Um, and and so this is what we basically are trying to do. Um, most of the countries are saying they've got financing gap. Uh, to meet the national biodiversity strategies and action plans, mm -hmm. uh, and we're here to curate, you know, financing mechanisms. And uh, what I do in most of these countries, especially the Anglophone countries uh, in Africa that I oversee, uh, is to help them curate these, you know, financing mechanisms of, of different sorts: mm -hmm. uh, green bonds, you know, payment for ecosystem services, mm -hmm. uh, conservation trust funds, name it. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about um, the different um, initiatives that um, different countries are into in regards to um, the biofin uh, project. So uh, there's, there's, there's quite an array of different financing mechanisms and solutions. And if you go to our global you know, website, you actually see that we've got um, an expose of about 150 different financing mechanisms um, and solutions that are being curated by uh, over now 132 uh, countries in the world. Okay. Uh, we initially were running with about uh, 41, mm -hmm. and now we've just onboarded an additional 91 uh, countries through the support of the Global Environmental Facility, Jeff. Okay. Um, so which is quite great. And so uh, just to give you a flavor, um, and of course, maybe for Zambia, we'll get into the specifics, mm -hmm. but uh, for Zambia, uh, we've been helping basically to also, you know, come up with a green bond market, you know, development. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are now, you know, doing um, taxonomy, green finance taxonomy for Zambia, and also supporting the creation of the national green finance um, you know, strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the few other things that we're doing, like the nature related, you know, uh, studies. Uh, for South Africa, uh, we have an investment portal that we've actually created for biodiversity, um, you know, for private sector to actually invest in biodiversity mm -hmm. assets. Um, in Botswana, we were also working on um, improving the uh, fees, the entry fees for protected areas. Mm -hmm. Because one of the issues that you actually realize um, now is that uh, you, you don't always have to look outward, you also have to look inward. Mm -hmm. And so what actually happened, like for Botswana, the protected area fees um, had been 
stagnated, you know, for almost 10 years. Okay. And we actually revised those, you know, 100 percent. And, you know, that has led to an increase mm -hmm. in their resources. So now we are working on ring fencing those revenues and basically channeling them to, um, you know, protected you know, areas. Okay. Rwanda, exciting stuff that we are actually working on with the Rwanda Green you know, Fund okay. uh, for NERO, okay. uh, where we've basically rooted the, the fees and fines uh, to a fund that we are creating. Yes. Uh, because again, these days, even if you're doing, um, you know, raising money, um, you can't start from zero, sending mm -hmm. what I would call the begging ball from zero. Uh, so we're actually raising domestic revenue from Rwanda by rerouting mm -hmm. the existing fees and fines into a facility, which okay. then we can actually use now to raise, um, you know, uh, funding. And then we also have, you know, fintech solutions like in Philippines, mm -hmm. Gcash, an exciting uh, solution where, you know, it's a fintech solution that we're actually using to you know, plant, you know, trees. Uh, Malawi, we are supporting carbon, you know, trading, uh, payment for ecosystem services. So there's quite a huge array of the different financing mechanisms that um, um, we, we're helping. Okay. Now, uh, whatever there's uh, financing involved, one critical issue comes up. Are you able to measure, are you able to see that where this finance has gone, we're seeing results? Yes, that's that's a very critical. You've mobilized one. resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've helped the country mobilize resources. Are you are you able to monitor what's happening on the ground? Yes, um, our modus operandi in you know all the countries is that we're looking for about four different kinds of results. Um, one obviously is institutional results, making sure that there's capacity building in mm -hmm. the institutions that we're working with. Mm -hmm. um, the second is making sure that um, you know we we see the impact. You know of, of the financing on biodiversity yes. um other than obviously just raising the, the revenues regulatory you know changes so we have a mechanism on how we track and uh, you will actually note that uh, we we have been very you know monumental uh, in the recent you know uh, issuance of uh, you know cec mm -hmm. uh, the green bond mm -hmm. uh, given that we obviously set up the framework you know for uh, green bond market development in zambia mm -hmm. and uh, just recently we were actually on the copper belt um with some of your colleagues from znbc yes, yes. uh to see exactly where those funds have been you know deployed so we are actually able to track that mm -hmm. and i think in the case of zambia you can actually see exactly what that has done given that now we're in this conundrum around, you know, uh, the impact of, you know, climate change mm -hmm. on our power uh, utilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a number of countries, I think we have a mechanism on how we really track. Uh, but I know that it's, 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 it's quite a big one uh, mm -hmm. in most of the countries. Sometimes it's a bit opaque to really see mm -hmm. what the impact of the different financing mechanisms really mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Let's zero in, um, in into Zambia. Given your, your, your extensive experience um, as a Biofuel National Coordinator for seven years prior to your current role, can you highlight some of the key activities um, that Biofin has been engaged in in Zambia? Thank you. Uh, my, my seven years as National Coordinator for the Biodiversity Finance Initiatives under UNDP um, were very exciting, given that um, I think when I was recruited way back, uh, around 2015, 2016, the issue around green finance was not something that was talked about mm -hmm. in corporate, even government, mm -hmm. um, financial sector. Um, and, and so one of the monumental issues was really uh, to have this conversation mainstreamed into the you know, financial sector, private sector, and, and also you know, public sector. Mm -hmm. uh, because awareness is a very critical you know, aspect mm -hmm. for people to really know, because you can't bring change for people that are actually not aware about what you're talking about. Exactly. Um, and so one of the instruments that we identified back then was the issue of green bonds as a potential you know solution and i must actually indicate at the time uh, when we started we actually wanted to look at pushing the agenda of uh, sovereign issuance for the government mm -hmm. to actually issue a sovereign you know green bond okay. but then you know the debt mm -hmm. issues you know mm -hmm. came in the way yes. and then we actually had to shift our attention to look at how do we then catalyze the private sector um, and then we started actually working on, on that. Mm -hmm. um, we realized we actually didn't have green bond you know, guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, and we worked on that within one year uh, with our stakeholders, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, and then obviously we onboarded other you know, players like the central bank mm -hmm. um, and, and other regulators of the financial sector like pensions and insurance, the Brief. Um, so other than that, you actually realize that when you're actually doing a green you know, bond, mm -hmm. there's two big players. Okay. There's the issuer mm -hmm. of the bond, mm -hmm. and of course, there's the investor who brings in the money. 
I was about to ask how do green bonds work? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so they, they, they just like work like any other bond except ah. the deployment of the proceeds, which is the money that you raise, mm -hmm. um, has some rules. It actually has to go in what is defined as a green Green project. projects. Ah. So there's there's mechanisms um you know where we actually vet what really is is green. is green and it undergoes what is called a second party opinion, um, which is an audit. Um, of your green bond framework to yes. basically check that this is indeed green mm -hmm. and there's mechanisms for also onward, you know, um, tracking mm -hmm. that uh, you are actually continuously, you know, deploying your proceeds into mm -hmm. a green asset to avoid what is called greenwashing. Mm. So we, we did that, um, and like I was saying that these two parties, um, yes. so what we did, you know, for the investors, because I mean, they can as well take this money elsewhere, Yes. Um, but we needed to actually create a carrot for them. Um, you actually note that in Zambia, if you actually invest in a green bond, or any other bond rather, a plain vanilla bond as we call it, mm -hmm. um, your interest you know, undergoes or met it with a 15% withholding tax. So what we did to create a carrot was actually to discuss with Minister of Finance to reduce or actually to zero rate ah, okay. the withholding tax, okay. which then becomes you know a, a carrot for for the investors and yes. then for the issuers, um, we are working now with Minister of Finance hopefully in this budget cycle to make sure that the insurance you know costs mm -hmm. uh, become tax deductible so that it reduces the overall incidence of tax on the part um, of the issuer so that beyond CEC we can actually see more mm -hmm. um, other private sector you know uh, entities really coming to the market and I must actually indicate we have the resources to actually help any other private you know companies in Zambia that would want to go to market okay yeah and, and then uh, Biofin has been instrumental in creating Zambia's green financing mainstreaming uh, working group. Can you elaborate more on this initiative and its significance? Thank you. Um, the green finance mainstreaming working group is basically a consortium that originally started with you know Biofin, the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, the Bank of Zambia, and then the Pensions and Insurance Authority, and then you also have the, the exchange, Luce. Mm -hmm. um, but additional members have actually been onboarded, of course, the Minister of Finance, Minister yes. of Green Economy, Minister of Lands, um, and we also have WWF, and recently we also onboarded the Zambia Institute of Chartered Accountants. Okay. Um, the significance of this, um, you will note that when there are all these initiatives that are coming in in a country, there's kind of fragmented approach to deployment mm -hmm. um, and adoption of some of these international um you know aspects mm -hmm. and what we wanted to uh, is to create this you know clearing house so that there's good congruence across all the um financial sector regulators and other key you know players okay. um as far as green finance mainstreaming and adoption in zambia really um is and that i must actually indicate has been magic okay. uh, given that this is actually a, a working uh, mechanism and as Biofin, we are actually supporting the, the secretariat that's being housed at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. And we also have staff that you know, are full-time uh, paid by Biofin as part of the secretariat. And I must actually indicate upfront that Zambia's financial sector regulators have actually been very upfront. Okay. And kudos to them. Uh, given that I have you know, this hybrid view of different other countries, I yes. must actually indicate that uh, they're Zambia's extremely very better. proactive. Mm -hmm. And um, based on the results that we've actually, you know, uh, seen for Zambia, mm -hmm. we've now created the similar, you know, uh, mechanism in Botswana. Mm -hmm. uh, and last week I was in Namibia. We we're also already looking at creating something like that, South Africa and many other countries that I oversee. Okay. And, and also we know that Zambia is currently dealing with a drought, which was declared a disaster and a national emergency by President Haka in the Hichilema, yes. which means that our energy sector is affected, food insecurity and biodiversity is affected of because course. look at how much charcoal yes. has come on, on yes. onto the market. I mean, and, even the animals themselves, and the, and the yes, water. And animals and, yeah. and water. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, government was talking about sinking boreholes in the national parks and mm -hmm. trying to create little dams for wildlife and so on and so forth. Is Biofin in Zambia doing anything around this issue? Well, what Biofin does is that we don't have project finance that builds bridges and roads, mm -hmm. but we finance the curation of mechanisms yes. yes so one of the potential you know mechanisms that we can actually look at is probably creating like a fund yes um and this is something that we've actually been conceptualizing yes. um unfortunately i think we have a situation now where every sector whether it's the water sector the wildlife sector each one of these um you know ministries if you like or sectors uh, created different you know funding you know um mm. uh, mechanisms which, which are called ctfs conservation okay. trust funds okay um you know, there's also the EPF, Environmental Protection Fund, and many other. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have like so many so funds many for each, but most of these have actually remained like paper funds. 
And this is where you come in as well. Of course. So one of the things that we're actually trying to see is, is whether we can actually consolidate and create a mm -hmm. national fund mm -hmm. uh, like what we've done in, in, in Rwanda okay. so that we avoid these fragmented you know, issues. But I know um, legally from a regulated perspective it's quite a tall order, mm -hmm. but that's something that we're working on conceptualizing how this can be created. Because I know right now there's, there's quite some huge momentum around creating um, a fund for climate yes. change, yes. Uh, you know, being championed by the Minister of Green Economy. Mm -hmm. But our view as Baofin is that we probably need to create one consolidated fund that deals with all the environmental issues, mm -hmm. be it climate change, be it biodiversity mm -hmm. conservation, be it land degradation mm -hmm. under the UNCCD. Okay. That way, then you have a very good coordinated mechanism uh, that's consolidated and then you find ways of raising domestic revenues um, and then um, get out to market and, and look for additional resources. We've come to the end of this week's edition of Climate Check. Make time next week, same time, same channel, as we discuss yet another issue that has to do with the planet Earth and its protection and preservation. My name is Mary Mwikisa. Thank you so much for joining. Goodbye.